So as we've done in previous weeks, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of give an overview of the 3D anatomy of the abdomen uh, this week. Um, so we're gonna start off here. Um, what we're seeing here is the external oblique muscles laterally. And then we're seeing bits of skin and then eventually the rectus sheath, which is a part of the rectus abdominis muscles in the middle. Okay, and as those layers strip away, that'll make a little bit more sense um, as we see the rectus abdominis muscles buried beneath that rectus sheath. So here we can see that a lot clearly, a lot more clearly. Um, you can see the rectus abdominis muscles. Um, and then we can see the deeper dissection on the left and then the rectus sheath still covering uh, the rectus abdominis on the right here. Um, we can see bits of the transverse abdominis, which is that inner layer, that third layer of the uh, external, of, of the um, abdominal muscles. And then we can also see parts of internal oblique, which are buried beneath on this side here. Okay, and I think we're gonna skip over some of the other structures because these are gonna go into some of the lower limb structures. So let's get into some of the internal anatomy. So right away, what I wanna point out is how much fat is really covering the abdomen. So the abdomen is one of the important areas for um, fat storage, not only in the subcutaneous tissue, but also viscerally. And that visceral fat is the fat that's around organs. And that's where the body kind of stores energy. So as someone puts on weight, a lot of the fat deposits around the abdomen, especially in men who have a more central um, tendency for fat deposition. Okay, we're stripping away some of the organs here. Um, and we can see the parts of the colon emerging here. We can see the kidneys to some extent. We'll talk about the kidneys next week. And then eventually we get to the jejunum, the ileum, and we can see parts of the uh, gallbladder on this side. Here's the pancreas running across. Here's the Abdominal aorta coming down. So what we're really seeing here is the gallbladder, the pancreas stretching across, and then the transverse part of the colon. But we can see the three parts of the pancreas, the head, the body, and the tail. We can see parts of the biliary tree here as well. So remember that the cystic duct is that spiral uh, vessel that leads to the gallbladder. This is what allows gall, uh, bile to be stored in the gallbladder. Um, we can also see other parts of the biliary tree. So we can see the common hepatic duct coming from the liver, the right and left hepatic ducts, and then the common bile duct, which actually enters um, into the duodenum. So this is the duodenum here. This would be the cut surface of the pylorus of the stomach as it opens into the duodenum. And uh, we can see both the vessels, the major pancreatic duct, as well as the common bile duct, opening into the duodenum to release those uh, gastric juices, as well as, uh, not gastric juices, excuse me, uh, pancreatic juices, um, which have those enzymes, as well as bile. Okay, we can see parts of the liver. So the liver is just, we're just seeing cut sections of it. So it's not very clear, but we can see a little bit more of it here on the right. 
transverse colon here running across. We can see, uh, oh, here, here we go. So we can see all of the liver here up top. We can see part of the stomach. So the stomach is this hollow organ here on the left. And then this was that part of the transverse colon that's disappearing. As we put those layers back on, again, we can see lots of liver here, some of the abdominal fat. We can see the hollowness of the stomach. Um, and then we can no longer see the colon or intestines, but we are beginning to see the uh, visceral fat here. Some of the lower ribs coming in, right? The floating ribs here, 11 and 12. Um, as we put those layers back on. I was trying to find the kidneys and not finding the kidneys. Okay, let's look at some of the vessels here. So let's look at the inferior mesenteric vein um, and some of the other veins. So for reference here, we've got the colon, ascending parts of it, transverse parts of it, descending parts of it, leading into the sigmoid part of it, and then finally the rectum. Uh, in the backdrop here, we can see some of the vessels. So we can see the um, inferior vena cava, since we're looking at the veins, we can see the um, uh, common iliac veins on either side. And then we're gonna start to see some of the more, um, yeah, so we can see the splenic vein coming here. Remember the splenic vein leads to the portal vein, which leads to the liver. We can see, um, looks like one of the, the, the spleen here not the adrenals, the spleen here on top of the uh, colic, um, the splenic flexure, I'm mixing everything up. So we can see the spleen here on top of the splenic flexure, and then this would be the colic flexure where the liver would be on this side. Okay. We can see the inferior mesenteric vein coming up here. We can see the inferior vena cava I pointed out earlier, and then the internal and external iliac veins coming off of the common iliac veins. Here goes the sigmoidal veins, so the smaller veins that are uh, draining the sigmoid colon. You can see here, we can see some of the rectal veins coming up the rectal plexus and then the superior rectal vein, which are branches from the inferior mesenteric vein. We can see parts of the intestines filling in here. So the larger intestine of the colon is already here. And then what we've filled in here are the smaller intestines. Okay, here we can see the stomach, the uh, hip bones filling in there. Lastly, let's look at some of the arteries. So the arteries of the pancreas are um, going to be branching from the celiac trunk. So remember, the celiac trunk is one of the main branches that come off the abdominal aorta. And we can see the gallbladder here. We can see parts of the right kidney, parts of the right uh, lobe of the liver here. We can see the duodenum. Um, the pancreas running across here, the abdominal aorta in the back here. So here's that celiac trunk and the main branches that are coming off the celiac trunk. So we've got the uh, hepatic artery, the gastric artery, and the uh, gastroduodenal artery. And then there's some other branches that we did not discuss, such as the pancreatic or duodenal, which supply the pancreas and the duodenum. Um, okay, so these are some other smaller branches that we did not speak about. We can completely ignore these. Um, I was hoping to see some of the, oh, here we go. So we can see the splenic vein once again, the superior mesenteric vein, and then these are gonna be the tributaries to the hepatic portal vein, right? So the portal vein we said is going to the liver, it's gathering up the blood from the GI system um, and taking it to the liver by those tributaries. 
Okay, and I think that's the main overview of some of the anatomy um, of the structures for this week.